Alright guys, Hatch Crown back again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Kenny intends to bring some leadership and communication to the Optic Texas team, but he mentions an interesting point on Draza, formerly his teammate over at the Los Angeles Thieves, and now joining Atlanta Faye, saying that when they teamed together, he, as in Kenny, was a significantly better communicator than Draza was. Given that communication has been something of an issue within the Faye's camp over the last couple of years, could this still be a weakness that holds their team back this season? Very much enjoyed to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new as always i would greatly appreciate it plenty to get into as always this i am very much looking forward to this content right chef tony with chef little tony we've got um you know method chefing something up and shotzi's there for the ride as well they did something a while ago didn't they optic where like shotzi and skump were cooking something they did some sort of challenge and um i can't remember if it turned out well i'm imagining that it didn't so i'm looking forward to seeing how this one goes speaking of method as well i thought this was a nice tweet that he did because if you guys have ever been to this location, you'll immediately recognize this as the, it's almost like a boulevard, I suppose, that runs down to the Anaheim Convention Center. I was fortunate enough to be able to go to Anaheim right on the final time that they've ever done an event here, because I'm pretty sure since the CDL has come around, they've never done an event at Anaheim again. There's been a couple of events in Los Angeles, but they haven't been at Anaheim. So um, it's a bit of a shame, because it's kind of been, it was like the home of COD for some time. The Hilton Bar is just here on the right-hand side. Legendary stuff, and Method is like nostalgic just been hitting crazy but interesting again that Methods is tweeting about competing and his competing days because he did just say the other day that um he kind of really misses it and maybe there's part of him that thinks damn you know maybe I could have just stuck out the year with Boston then joined Optic I don't think he regrets what he's done I think he's made the correct decision all things considered but still Method has been like oh like he's still got that itch to compete you know and he probably feels like maybe he retired a little bit too early so maybe there's a part of him that thinks you know what challenges let's run it back because he wants to at the start of the season then will probably step away again but um you know a lot of these guys it takes them a while to switch off that competitive edge and i understand it for sure and skump i mean what did he say he recently was like 80 percent sure that he wanted to come back for this season but he wasn't 100 percent sure so he decided not to which i think was the correct call but um you know maybe treyarch's game next year there's the chance that some of these guys have a think about their return speaking of optic as well this i thought was crazy actually i don't know if you think this is just a massive coincidence because um blake and also Hitch tweeted about this. So this is on the store, the off-season. Now, the off-season is exactly what the Team Summertime guys call their event that they do, where the Black Ops 2 throwback 25k is going to be hosted with all the other stuff. It's called the off-season. That's like their name that they come up with. Now, the off-season is exactly a term that they came up with, right? That's what people call this time of the year. But um, still, it's kind of their thing. And it's also their theme. I mean, look at this. So under the off-season in the bundle, you've got this camo, which is the exact vibes of the TST guys with, it's almost identical in many ways to like, um, you know, their entire, their entire thing. So I'm a bit confused whether like Activision or whoever's come up with this is just basically ripped off their entire thing or whether you guys think that this is just like, um, this haven't just randomly that they went down this route, but um, it feels very TST inspired, despite the fact that they have no code, you know, it's not them in the game and Hitch and Blake are like, you know, as Blake says, use codes. Oh, there's no codes. So a little bit confusing there. I know that people are saying, oh, sue them. But I don't know if there'll be recourse for that. I don't know. It's just an interesting story that I thought I mentioned for you guys. So Kenny is joining Optic for the first time since he was on Optic Gaming Los Angeles back in 2020. And there is, as there always is, a lot of optimism from Optic fans that Optic Texas this year is going to be their year. But there is a lot of reason to think exactly that. And part of it is possibly because some of their worst LAN records over the last couple of years have come against players and teams that are no longer a thing. Mutineers, as we saw earlier today, rebranding to the Miami Heretics or whatever, announced over the next couple of weeks. Thieves have blown up completely and their big, like, main enemy in Kenny is now on their team. And the Seattle Surge that have knocked up together the World Championship the last two years in a row, Preds now on Optic. So, and you know, their other chief rival, I suppose, theoretically would be FaZe, and, but they always tend to beat FaZe. Toronto definitely caused Optic problems back in the day, but in recent times, it's been a little bit more 50-50 in that game. 
Now, will Optic dominate the season seems highly doubtful. The top end of the league is just way too competitive. But nonetheless, some of the weaknesses that Optic have had over the last couple of years should be addressed by this roster. What I wonder, though, is what happens with FaZe. Because we saw Scump and Methods came up with their tier list. And they had Toronto pretty much third. New York pretty much fourth. And then FaZe and Optic in the S tier tied for first. Which is it's difficult to say. Those two teams, FaZe and Optic, probably on paper in terms of pure roster ceiling are the top two. Withered LV, the best two teams, I don't know. FaZe will always be good. I mean, look, this team has been number one in the CDL standings for the last four years in a row, entirely unprecedented, but they haven't really won that much, have they? Apart from the Cold War season, they've won one event in the last two years. They've made lots of Sundays, lots of top threes, lots of grand finals, but actually haven't won as much as they feel like they had. So this year, they thought, you know what? Let's change up the formula. We're going to put Selium to the main are full time and we're going to move on from this whole thing we bring in other mains like Arsatis and like Slasher and bring in a faster player such as Adraza. Now there's all the other questions about Draza and Abizi and the beef there and the drama that's gone down there and whether they can resolve those issues and whether it's going to be all sunshine and rainbows for the season. I don't think that side is going to be the biggest deal to be honest. The question that I'm slightly more interested in is how is the communication going to work here because we can see the numbers that Kennedy puts together. So um, overall KD pretty similar, Hardpoint KD pretty similar, Search and Destroy, like all the numbers KD wise pretty similar between Slasher and Draza over the past season. But engagement wise, Slasher's so right, 40 engagements per 10, draws at 43 engagements per 10. Faster player in the flex role. I do think role wise makes more sense for these guys and as far as I'm concerned should free up Simp a little more. Simp has felt almost somewhat constrained over the last couple of seasons, certainly this past year, having to get all this hill time, do a lot of the dirty work as it were, like Simp shouldn't really be that guy. He needs to be off the leash, slaying hard up there with a BZ. But Simp has been filling the gap so much because the AR duo was at times, I think, somewhat dysfunctional that I think Draza can solve those issues. The risk that FaZe have, though, is either that other teams get better, which I think that they are, or that there's other problems emerging in the camp. And I think communication in-game could well be one of them. This is one of the reasons why I think that despite the fact that Draza was Optic's number one pick and Kenny was the second pick, really, I actually think Kenny might be the better fit to. And this is what Kenny says on when they were on Los Angeles Thieves together with Draza, certainly last season in Vanguard. He reckons the main reason why they switched roles with Kenny to the SMG was because he is a way better communicator in game than Draza is. Explain that to me. Tell me, tell me what the, about your yeah. role. So I came into the league while in AW, like I said, I started in AW. I started off as an AR. I was a flex player, ran AR. And then in our, on our World War II team, when I came back, I ran the AR initially, but Lamar Agassi ran the sub and he wasn't really that good on it. Um, so we switched roles mm -hmm. and it was just better for our team. So I've always just been a player that like Yo, let me know what y'all think is better for our team for me to run. I'll run that gun. And like in Vanguard, like I ran the AR initially. I was actually playing pretty well. We just had a bad little stage. And then I, I gave the option to like, yo, we should we maybe switch roles because me and Draza like had the option initially to switch roles. And I was like, it, this may work. But it was it was only because of communication. Like mm -hmm. I'm a big communicator in game. I talk a lot. I can read the map well. Like I know what's going on every moment of the game. So uh with two sub players not being the most vocal like we had dill and him and zach they weren't the most vocal players so like i was like maybe me and sam can like offset each other from a sub and ar role mm -hmm. and it worked um but people don't understand like our best maps were when i ran an ar as a, like a third ar and i just always been gross with that since you already signed you weren't joining optic where you have stayed on lat or what were your other options um um probably won't speak on that yeah respectfully but there was multiple options i don't really want to speak on that is there a way to show that you're locked on a team? Not really. I mean, yeah, but no. I was going to be on the team regardless. That, that comes off egotistical, but that's just what it was. I had plans already, but I definitely was surprised to get on this team and because I obviously never thought I'd be playing for Optic, to be honest. My team ever talked to Ken about YY and Wes. Uh, in BO4, we remapped re his uh, YY to a D-pad, and he still did it. So... Take that out, you will. Creative people. Somebody's yeah, chat, we remapped. It was such like an issue Matt, in BO4 that we remapped it to his D-pad and we still did it. One so we just chalked it. We are like, week whatever. in August to go create. But it looks mad cool, though, when he's in the, in the flow state.
Not for me, for Hector. It looks mad. A cool. video that you want to create. So Kenny also talked a little bit there about his other options and kind of saying it also Octane was talking about how this guy can't stop why why no matter what you do. But um, you know, Kenny didn't really want to discuss too much, but he did have other options on the table. I imagine teams like Boston were talking to because Boston were talking to pretty much everyone, it seems, this offseason. But um, look, he wasn't gonna be going to phase, right? It was, you know, Draza was the option for phase, whereas Optic have gone for Kenny, and I think it can work out very well for them. So as Kenny was suggesting. The Draza's comms in the Vanguard year on the SMG, Envoy and Draza don't have historically the best comms compared to a guy like Kenny and Octane. Now, not like Draza and Envoy can't develop that skill, and you don't need four incredibly vocal players because Octane's very vocal and he's um, you know going to call out very well and very effectively. Kenny is similar in many ways over the last several years. So if Draza and Envoy also do that you probably have many, too many cooks in the kitchen, but they thought during the Vanguard season, they wanted someone in the front lines, like basically leading up the lines in Kenny, to actually be able to communicate and say things to the team that were going to help them. So he doesn't really believe that, because they got so much better, right? Kenny moved to the sub, and they immediately went from being a team that was highly struggling to pretty much within one stage of bringing Shane on as well as their S&D coach, pretty much, or at least as another coaching member of the team, helping with their search and destroy to improve it went from being like a middle of the pack team with some decent results to being a back-to-back -back championship winner with Kenny back-to-back -back MVP and Kenny doesn't really believe that that's because he was just way better on the SMG than he was on the AR or Draza was way better on the AR than he was on the SMG but it was a comms thing it was that their comms got significantly better with Kenny changing roles and that's what helped them really deliver results teamwork communication is massively important and I would say that phase have potentially struggle with that. If you listen to FaZe's comms, they're never as clear as Toronto's or as um, certainly Thieves have been one example of just really great crisp communication. Even Optic the last season, what Ghosty was doing in the communication was very impressive and I think it showed in their results. FaZe haven't always had that. Okay, they call out, they say things, but they don't have a human UAV, right? They've never had a Formal or they've never had an Octane or even a Ghosty as was described in previous seasons and I think Kenny probably falls into that that category as well. Maybe overshadowed by Octane to some degree in terms of how good the comms are, but nonetheless, Kenny deserves a lot of credit. Slasher has never really been that comms guy. Okay, he calls out, he talks, like he gives some advice and tells you what to do, but um, he's not Octane in terms of his communication, and certainly neither is Draza. Selium's comms are some, you know, they get memed on, right, because of the way that he speaks. Simp definitely communicates well, as does Abizi, but like, they're solid communicators, but there's nothing crazy there, right? I don't think there's like an S tier communicator on that team and maybe they don't need an S tier communicator they're skillful enough to get away with it anyway but I think there's an argument that says that if this phase team has a weakness because there's no weaknesses in skill there's no weaknesses in search and destroy in control in hardpoint or in any game mode at all even if there are weaknesses outside of the server the weakness they might have, I think, is comms. Compared to Toronto, whose comms historically are very good, Insight does a lot of work there, Optic have got Kenny, New York Subline has had good comms as well, I think there's some questions about, you know, getting rid of Priest to bring it in Sib, how that's going to fare, but yeah, I thought Kenny's perspective was interesting that he doesn't, he thinks he's got better comms than Draza, basically, that just adds another little fuel to the fire of Optic versus FaZe, how that might potentially go down going into next season. Just to close out, thought was kind of nice actually here as well from Brian Stats, looking back on the period from Paris. Parasite's Black Ops 2 to Advanced Warfare. It's a shame for Parasite in a way because after Advanced Warfare, a lot of his bridges were burns. So despite the fact that he still had, you know, top skills as a player going into Black Ops 3 and beyonds, he can never really get on a good team anymore. But, um, you know, seven championships, nine finals appearances, first of a world champion, first of a four-peat, of course, as well, on, you know, the classic Freako Impact days. Even S&D player of the season in Advanced Warfare, I completely forgot about, and they won early on on that phase red team that he was a part of. And as he says, like, Advanced Warfare was my last time playing for what people consider to be a championship caliber team. All in all, everything happens for a reason. And um, it's good that Parasite's still around today, because many old school players and back then, like, uh, we don't hear from them anymore, we don't really know what they're up to anymore, which is kind of sad, I think, in some respects. But very much interested to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.